Hi, this is Jeff Curto, and I am going to spend a few minutes talking about using the Adobe Spark Video app. This is an app that's available on the web and also on uh, the iOS system on your iPhone or iPad. Uh, I'm going to concentrate on the web, but I'll show you a little bit about the app later on. This can be a great storytelling platform to make simple video stories. So I've gone to spark.adobe.com and there's a login button or a start now for free. If I already had a login, uh, then I would click that. Start now for free uh, would take me to this page right here. Welcome to Adobe Spark. And it allows me to log in with my Google ID, with Facebook. I can sign up for an account with email. Or if I have an Adobe ID, which uh, many people would have if they already have for example, the Adobe Photographer's Bundle of Lightroom and Photoshop or any other Adobe product, they would have an Adobe ID. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and log in with my Adobe ID since I have one and uh, go from there. So I'm going to start out by clicking this plus button at the top and it gives me some options, some things I can explore here in the center but I'm going to use start from scratch and create video. It's going to load up a little page. The project I'm going to make, I'm going to call Italians at work. All right, so that'll differentiate the project. It'll tell me some or give me some options for some templates here, but I'm just going to choose start from scratch. Start from scratch. And it will give me this option or set of options here uh, in my little interface. And so let me kind of tour you around the interface. It's pretty simple. There's not a lot to it. Over here in the top right are four buttons. Music, which we'll get to at the end. Resize, which gives me the option between widescreen and square. I'm going to stick with widescreen, which is the default. Theme, which is a bunch of combinations of colors and fonts. I'm going to choose dark as my theme, and layout, which gives me four possibilities. Full screen, split screen, so that the screen is split in half, left to right, caption, and title, title and text. So for my first picture, I'm going to choose title and text because, or for my first slide rather, because I want to give it a title. So I'm going to call it, uh, like I did before, Italians at Work. All right, it's a possibility for a subtitle there if I wanted to. You'll notice that it has my uh, name, Jeff Curto Photography, here. This is a stamp uh, that if you've been using the product for a while, you can insert this. I'm going to turn it off for our purposes here, uh, the Italians at Work. And I'll just leave that as a blank black slide. There are also two other slides here down at the bottom, credits and outro, which are part of the standard uh, interface. And then there's also a little clock here. Four seconds is the default. Uh, so I'll leave my title slide at four seconds for the default. But uh, as we'll see here in a second, I can change the timing of each slide. So I'm just going to add a slide. And as soon as I add a slide, it pops up video, text, photo, icon. So I'm going to choose photo. As soon as I choose photo, over here on the right-hand side, it now says add photos. There's an upload photo but button, which I could use to upload photos. I can find, find free photos, Adobe Stock, Creative Cloud, Lightroom. This is awesome if you have your Lightroom catalog synced to the cloud. Uh, this works really well. Uh, Dropbox, which is what I'm going to use, Google Photos, Google Drive. But you'll notice that I have a little disconnect thing next to Dropbox. That's because I've already synced or connected, rather, Dropbox to my Adobe Spark product. So when I click on Dropbox, it shows me my whole Dropbox. And then I click on the folder for Adobe Spark project, and it will load up the images that I have chosen for this uh, Italians at work. I'm going to choose this picture of these uh, two guys painting uh, a shutter green. 
Notice that one of the things that's interesting here is that because this is a video and because the video has a certain horizontal aspect ratio, that aspect ratio does not fit the aspect ratio of my images. So if I click this little pencil icon here in the top right corner, I get plus and minus buttons. And if I want to have more of my image in the screen, uh, I can have that. You'll notice that it'll have black bars on either side. That's fine with me. I'd rather have the composition that I made rather than the composition that it sort of dictates for me. All right, so uh, there we go. I've got one slide of these two guys working. I'm going to add another slide and I'm going to add a photo and it'll take me back to that same set of pictures. And I will pick uh, this guy, Carpenter, in his workshop. And again, uh, I already cropped this picture fairly tight when I made it, so I don't want it cropped any tighter, so I can make it a little bit smaller so that he fits exactly within the frame. And you'll notice that the default here is two seconds. This little slider allows me to increase the time of this to say, oh, I don't know, six or seven seconds. If I go back to the next, the last picture, it's at two seconds too. Let's make that... Uh, Oh, I don't know, eight seconds or six seconds long, all right? So now I'm on this picture. Now if I click the plus button, it'll give me another slide, add photo. And you can kind of see how this works. It just keeps going with more and more uh, slides. I just keep adding slides. In this case, because this is a vertical picture of this guy dumping out some rocks in Florence, I'm going to choose Layout and choose split screen. And now with my split screen image, I can again, I can make this a little smaller so that he fits, or I can make it bigger and scroll him around a little bit so that I have it where I want it. And then over here, let's do Florentine worker. All right. And on that slide, I'll give it Oh, I don't know, let's give it eight seconds of screen time. And you can see that what I can do is just keep adding slides, photo, go over here to the group of images that I have assembled. Uh, let's grab this, uh, this guy who's uh, restoring a piece of artwork. And I can make him a little smaller so that he fits a little bit better. Or let's, you know, let's make him a little bit bigger and scroll him down just a little bit so and let's put him up there at uh, I don't know five seconds and I can also notice that there's a plus button here I can also add some text so if I added let's say the text of art restorer art restorer and let's say I wanted to make that a little bit smaller and let's say I wanted to make that a little bit smaller and move it over to this dark area of the image. Notice that when I did that, it actually made my picture a little bit darker so that the text shows up a little bit better. So an interesting thing that I've used a couple of times when I've done these is that down here in this slide, and let's make this slide a little bit shorter. Let's make that three seconds. Notice this little set of dotted lines here. And the dotted lines allow me to duplicate this slide. So I now have it two times. In the second version, let's delete the Art Restorer. So it's now back to its full brightness. So I'll have a title on one slide, and then it'll go to the next slide, and it won't have that title, and it'll be brighter. So. The other part that I wanted to show you is that if I've decided that I don't want these in the order that I have them, let's say I want uh, the Florentine worker to be first, all I need to do is drag and drop them into the order that I want them in the timeline. So I've got a little play button. This play button plays just that slide. This play button will play the entire presentation. By default, it's going to add some music. I'm going to go back to music here in a second and show you music. So here's some music. It'll play my presentation. There's my Florentine worker. And 
the next picture will come up here in a second. There's my carpenter guy. And you can hear the pleasant music, the painter guys. And I want to get to the part where I'm going to show you this uh, art restorer. And then that goes away and it just fades to the more brightly colored picture. All right. So you get the idea. I can close out of this play box. I can scroll forward on the timeline. I can get to the credits, add your own credits. So I can say photographs by Jeff Curto and created with work by you know, Jeff Curto. So that's what it is. So just photographs by Jeff Curto. And then the last thing is, uh, this is my logo right here. Visit our website. So I'll do, uh, you know, photograph, www.photographitaly.com. Here is music, music. So by default, this product comes with a bunch of royalty free music. So by default, it seems to put in uh, this one song, Places I've Been, Relaxed. You can listen to all of these. For my workshop students, I give you a USB uh, drive with a bunch of other royalty free music, which uh, might please you more than some of these. So you would choose add my music and it would upload that music. There are now two ways to share this presentation, a button called share, which allows me to share it via Adobe's website. I don't have to host it anywhere else. It can be shared via Adobe's website, create link, and it's going to create a link. Uh, so here's the, uh, the link and I can put it on Facebook, put it on Twitter, etc., etc. Um, so I'll grab that link, copy it. And then the other is download and it would prepare the video for download and it would download it to my laptop. I won't take the time to do that. The last thing I wanted to mention about this is that there is also, as I mentioned at the beginning, an app for your iPhone or your iPad. It looks like this. Um, it's uh, uh, pretty much the same feature set that we just went through on the web. So for my purposes, for my workshop students, this is awesome because you can get it done in just a few minutes without a whole lot of muss or a whole lot of fuss. And uh, at the end of our week together, we can share our short stories about our Italian experiences.